Hey, welcome to UK Wildcraft. So if you're going for a walk in nature in the winter, it can look a bit bare. But if you know where to look, there's still plenty of wild edibles to find. First of all, you've got the crow garlic, or it's basically like a wild spring onion. And you'll find these in grasslands. They're still a bit small this time of year, but they're, they're edible. Uh, they've got like a, a slight bluish tinge to the colour. If you're looking for the grass, you'll, you'll see them stand out eventually once you uh, know how to find them. Uh, they've got like a, a very strong onion smell. You'll, if you break the leaves and smell it, you'll smell the onion. And anything that smells like onion is edible. So you can't really confuse these with anything. Uh, you do need permission from the landowner to dig up bulbs, so just be careful when you're digging them up. But they're basically a weed, so I don't really have a problem with digging them up. As long as, you, as, long as you're respectful for nature and uh, don't take too many, I think it's fine. So yeah, you see here the the bluish colour of the of the leaves, and they're also hollow. So what you do is just get your knife and just press down all around them, and just lift them up from underneath. your own supply of garlic in the winter and you can just use these in dishes instead of garlic and they've got a nice mild garlicky flavour so I'm going to collect some of these up so next up we've got another grassland species which is common sorrel uh, I quite like this because uh, it's got a nice strong citricky sort of flavour. It's between somewhere between lemon and apple peel, and it's a flavour that you don't really get much of in the winter. So it's quite a good find. Uh, you can make a good soup out of this, and it's also good added into salads as well. To ID it, what you need to do is look at the the base of the leaf, and you can see it's got like sharp sort of arrow points at the lobe. And that is a good indicator that it's common sorrel. You do have to be careful though, because there's a plant called the arum lily. Uh, the young leaves can look quite similar to this. Uh, there's not actually any out yet that I found. They usually around, they start growing around sort of late January, so I've not actually seen any yet. But yeah, make sure that you research those when you're not getting, you're not getting this plant. Uh, also, you can mistake it for dock, but they're not poisonous, so it's fine. So here's young common sorrel here. They grow one leaf per stem and usually in a, a rosette. Over here we have, this is dock here. So you can see they look fairly similar to a young common sorrel leaf. The noticeable difference you'll see at the, at the lobes here they don't have pointed arrows. So if you're taking a walk through the woods in winter and you kick back some of the leaf litter, there's a good chance you'll find ground elder shoots because they're quite common. So this is, uh, this is the older one here. They are edible, like this, but the older ones don't taste too good. What you're looking for is, yeah, just here. The younger ones like that, you see where the leaves are still a bit curled up. They taste a lot nicer. There's another one there. So with ground elder, the leaves are compound leaves, so that means each leaf is made up of smaller leaflets and the leaves are oval and serrated. Another good way to ID ground elder is the, the stems are triangular so if you roll them in your fingers you'll feel a triangular shape. And these, these little shoots are quite nice, they've got a really strong taste of carrot so they're good to add into your salad. So I'm just going to collect a load of these up.
chuck them in my basket. So this is pine and the, the needles are a really good source of vitamins A and C which can be quite difficult to find in the winter. Uh, to tell it's pine, just look at the needles and they always grow in sets of two, you see out there? Always in sets of two with pine. Uh, so they make a really good tea, these needles. All you do is uh, just boil them in water for about five minutes, strain them off, and then drink the liquid. You've got to make sure, though, that you either crush or cut the needles to release the vitamins. One thing to be very careful of, though, is to make sure it's pine and not you, because you is poisonous. But with you, the they don't grow in pairs like this, and also the the need the leaves don't grow all around the branch. Like you see the pine there, they grow all around the branch. With you, they grow in a flat plane. Pine resin can also be collected from wounds in the tree and you can just eat that like, it's like chewing gum. Very, very sticky. It's got quite a nice menthol sort of alpine-y flavor to it. So this is the yew tree, as you can see it's got needles like the pine but they're not as long as pine, they're not in sets of two and they are on a flat plane. Just make sure you don't mistake these for pine because they are very poisonous. This is ground ivy, it's not actually related to ivy, it's just called that because it it spreads along the ground just like ivy does and it's got kidney shaped leaves and if you crush them it's, they've got quite a strong floral almost minty smell uh, it will start to flower in sort of spring early spring you'll get these purpley blue flowers come up and dried the flowers and the leaves make a really good herbal tea One other edible wild green that you'll find grown absolutely everywhere is wild chervil or cow parsley. Uh, I'm not actually going to include how to ID this plant in this video because it's got some potentially deadly lookalikes, like, um, hemlock. So what I'm going to do is I'll do a separate video on how to safely ID wild chervil. And finally we have yarrow which is a fairly common herb. You'll find it growing in grasslands. And it's another good one for herbal teas. If you just dry it, same as ground ivy, you can uh, use it for tea. Or you can just chop it up, put it in a salad. It's just got quite a nice mild floral flavour. Uh, another good use for it, if you strip it off, of, strip the little leaves off of the, the main stem, and just chop it up really fine. And you can uh, use some softened butter and just add, add the leaves into that. And then you'll have yarrow butter.